Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and I, I hope that we all, as uh, members of the XRP community, can, can, can appreciate just how early we are investing in crypto relative to the rest of the world, whether, whether you're talking about other individuals, institutional investors, other businesses in general. You know, we, we were here first before almost anybody else. Less than 1% of the people on the planet own Bitcoin, even fewer know about XRP. And to me, these are just indications of the degree that uh, this asset class is absolutely in its nascency. And so I, I firmly feel that way. I don't care that the asset class has been around for over 10 years, which might seem like a long time to some, to some but it's, it's, the, it's the youngest asset class, asset class in the world. I mean, it's been hundreds of years since there was an entirely new asset class here. This is not something that happens every day. And so that's why this is, to me, it just seems like a once in a lifetime opportunity here. And so you have this headline because look, crypto is not going away unless the internet goes away. I, I feel that strongly about it. Even if I'm wrong about XRP, take a look at this headline though, indicating this. A $1.2 billion publicly traded company may start investing in Bitcoin and gold to avoid inflation. Well, how about that? I've been talking about on this channel for some time, the degree to which the United States government is debasing the United States dollar via just infinite printing of, uh, of, uh, of the dollar. And it's not the first time in history, but it's never been done to this degree. And I understand that's because of the pandemic. I get all that, but it's happening. And so it's not like I'm gonna make a political statement on that front. It's just a matter of fact thing. More dollars are entering the world. It will debase the you know the, the buying power of the United States dollar. Uh, some think that hyperinflation is gonna come. I, I don't know if that's gonna come. If so, perhaps not anytime soon, maybe it would. But that's why a lot of money now is flowing into assets that are finite. Think about, you can think about land. Like there's a finite, finite amount of land. There's a reason that real estate can make sense, even if it's, and it may be in a bubble right now. I'm not gonna talk about that in this video. But that's, there's a reason that money's been flowing to gold and flowing into cryptocurrencies. And we have our opportunity to get our piece of the pie first before the rest of the world thought that this could even be a thing. And so uh, next time you run into family or friends that think you're nuts for being in crypto, just keep in mind this story, and this is just one anecdotal incident, a $1.2 billion company, and maybe your family and friends think they're smarter than the $1.2 billion company, but they're talking about getting into crypto because it's not going away and they see what's happening with the dollar here. But uh, before I go any further, if you would please delicately tap that like button, I'd certainly appreciate it. And also, if you are a fan of Ripple and XRP, you done came to the right spot, son. Go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lamb Boat channel. Don't cost nothing. Shout out to XRP Crypto for sending this piece my way. I very much do appreciate it here. And so uh, the MicroStrategy, that's the company in question here. A publicly traded company worth $1.2 billion told shareholders that it plans to invest $250 million in alternative investments or assets. Hmm, how about this? A strategy shift that could see the firm buying Bitcoin. Now, we, we got news a, a little over a year ago. It was pub made publicly available that a public pension fund was actually investing directly into cryptocurrencies, also blockchain companies, but specifically cryptocurrencies. Yes, actual pension funds. And that was done through Morgan Creek Digital as the first public announcement of that. So it, in all likelihood, it was the first instance of that ever occurring. And the people in charge cited the reason for this is the opportunity for asymmetrical returns. And they understand that the crypto asset class absolutely is not going away. Now, I should also state here that I'm not a financial advisor. I don't have a financial background. So I'm not offering financial advice. Don't buy or sell because of me. I just run this channel as a, as a fun hobby. I love talking about this stuff. I love engaging with the rest of the XRP community. And so that is all it is. I just want to be transparent so that nobody thinks I'm something that I'm not. But uh, the company's president and chief financial officer, Fong Li, if I'm saying that right, I may not be, uh, made the comments during a June 28th earnings call, according to a transcript published on The Motley Fool. The remarks came in the context of returning value to shareholders. And I'm going to show you an XRP chart to make a point, but I, I, I do want to read, this is the actual quote from that earnings call where they talk about this. So I want to run through this. And I'm going to show you the XRP chart to make a point. <laughs> Overall, We've returned more than $245 million to shareholders through the repurchase of 1.8 million shares since the fourth quarter of 2018. 
our capital allocation strategy going forward is to return a portion of this excess capital to our shareholders and invest a portion in assets with higher return profiles in cash. Hmm, go on. Accordingly, today, we are announcing a capital allocation strategy under which we plan to return up to $250 million to our shareholders over the next 12 months. In addition, we will seek to invest up to another $250 million over the next 12 months in one or more alternative investments or assets, which may include, check this out, stocks, bonds, commodities such as gold, digital assets such as Bitcoin, or other asset types. Well, I'll be gosh darn, a publicly traded company talking about investing in not just stocks, bonds, and a traditional commodity such as gold, but a cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. Well, how about that? Now, I know they didn't state XRP there, but let me tell you something here. My investment thesis is that utility matters and will win the day. So if I'm right, and there's no guarantee, but I am Mr. XRP Bull, if I'm right, XRP is going to be here for decades or longer. And what do you think ultimately is going to happen as other entities continue to diversify, especially as the debasement of the United States dollar continues to occur thanks to this ridiculous amount of trillions of dollars of just the, the printing press going crazy here? What do you think is ultimately going to happen? And here we are super duper early. And so like people thought, and you hear this with every market cycle with the crypto asset class, like every time there's a boom and bust cycle, and there's been like seven over the last decade, major ones where there's like 80 to 90% drawdowns. Every time that happens, people just have this attitude because they, I guess they're just not sufficiently informed. They're like, ah, oh, well, we missed, we missed the boat on that one. That, that's the end of that. But each time there's another one. And so you might keep, you might ask yourself eventually after a, over a decade of these cycles, why is it that this bubble pops? And they are bubbles. You know, every asset class has bubbles. Gold has been in a bubble. Real estate's been in a bubble. Stocks have been in a bubble. Crypto has been like all. It, it doesn't mean that there's something uh, innately wrong with what's going on necessarily. I mean, it can. Like there's tulip mania. That was a bubble that ultimately went bust and never reinflated. But why is it the case that you can have bubble pop after bubble pop after bubble pop, but then it keeps reinflating with XRP absolutely being part of this? At some point, would you not just stop scratching your head and go, oh, wait a minute, that's because there's something to this. And if you don't get it, if you don't understand why, why wouldn't you just do more research to find out why? Because at some point, enough time has to pass where you're like, okay, this, this is still here. Like, what if another 10 years pass? Are you still going to see the likes of Peter Schiff saying that Bitcoin and the crypto asset class is going to zero? Will you still see that? I mean, maybe. I mean, that, that'll be pure idiocy at that point. What about 30 years in? At some point, it becomes clear, but right now, while it's less clear, there's more of an opportunity. It seems more risky, but that's why I've been mentioning lately that my aha moment in late 2017 was when I realized that there are business models that cannot exist without a decentralized cryptocurrency with an open market value. Now, what I'm referencing here specifically is XRP being positioned as a bridge currency. But once I realized that, I was like, oh my God, this isn't going away. It, that's all it took for me. I was like, oh my God. And I know what other uh, you know, Bitcoin maxis are more excited about uh, Bitcoin or a cryptocurrency. Okay, if they're maxis, Bitcoin being used in place of fiat currency. That's what they're used, interested in. And super duper, if that happens, fine. I'm, uh, that's that's a potentially a viable use case. I think it's probably going to happen even if it takes a really, really long time. Even if it takes over 50 years, a cryptocurrency, whether it's Bitcoin or not, I could see it starting to take hold. I absolutely could. It's just it's not it's not solving a problem for most people in the world today, so it's probably not going to be the first major use case. But then you've got XRP that can fix problems today, and you can have new business models today. And it, again, it has to be a cryptocurrency that is decentralized with an open market value. And so again, it's not going away. And we realized this first. We were here first. And so you can look at this chart where I'm circling right here. This is towards the end of 2013 when XRP had been on the market for, I guess, a little less than a year at that point. Because uh, towards the end of 2017 or 2012, rather, it was still um, in beta. They're still testing all that good stuff. But XRP, it's always been volatile and it won't always be volatile, I don't think, anyway. But uh, it was around half a penny, jumped up to six cents, and then it crashed back down. And then here you can see the most recent major run-up, and there are other ones in between, but the most major recent run-up was XRP was worth 20-something cents, and then uh, ran up to almost $4, and then there was a major retracement. But it's not going away. This is my firm opinion, not financial advice, but it is a, my firm opinion. It is, it is here to stay. And so what are the implications of being here before everyone else? 
Well, think about it. Think about how much money is going to... You're talking about gold, for example, has a market cap right now, or at least last I checked, somewhere around like $9 trillion. Maybe it's maybe it's even higher now. I haven't checked, I guess, that recently, with maybe within the last couple of weeks or so. But I know gold hit uh, an all-time high recently, somewhere around like... It was a little north of $2,000. Had never happened before. And, and so certainly over $9 trillion market cap. And then you've got the entire crypto asset class as a whole worth a few hundred billion dollars. It's like nothing. What do you think is going to happen as this asset class continues to prove that it's got staying power, as XRP continues to be adopted in the real world, and as money flows in, as confidence increases, and we were here first? Because the neat thing about volatility, and I understand when it's to the downside, it's not your friend, okay, fine, but when it's to the upside, my God, it can be the greatest thing since sliced bread. It can be absolutely fantastical. And the reason we have this is because of two primary things that I've been mentioning a lot as of late. Two primary th reasons. There's the frenzy around this, and you know how humans behave when there's a frenzy. We saw that during the dot-com boom and bust, did we not? That, that was stocks, not crypto-related. Humans just behave like this. Oh, a, a company with a dot-com at the end of it? Take my money. Like that, That's how humans behave. Because there's this crazy, it's like, oh my god, there's something to it. People don't want to miss out. And people are always going to be like that. It's ingrained in us, right? And so that is happening here. But the other reason there's an opportunity for a multiplier effect is purely because markets are so illiquid now. And so to, to conceptually understand this, I always like to point out, it's a simple explanation. There's more, to, like I could go more in depth, but if you just want to try and grasp, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, consider this. How much money today would it take to put throw into Bitcoin to make it double in terms of market cap versus how much money would you have to throw into XRP to make it double in market cap? Well, you'd, you'd have to put way less into XRP, substantially less, because there's not as much in there in the first place, way less money. And so the smaller cap the coin, the more opportunity for asymmetrical returns if it goes on a run. And that's just a fact of life. Now, I'm, you know, I'm still not going to buy into smaller cap coins unless somebody convinces me that there's real utility there, because I'm only investing 100% uh, at this point based on utility, real world adoption. That, that's the choice that I made for myself. You do you, do you but that's what I have decided to do. And, and so as a result of that, just think about the multiplier effect. Because I firmly believe that the, this asset class is going to be valued in the trillions at some point. I can't imagine that not ultimately happening. And there should be individual cryptocurrencies, I would suspect, that will have individual market caps in the trillions. And I think that you don't need over 5,000 cryptocurrencies, even though they exist today. And so what if, what if, uh, for instance, someone like Dan Moorhead, who is the CEO of uh, Pantera, Pantera Capital, which is the first Bitcoin investment firm ever uh, in 2013, who, who he says there's probably going to be like 8 to 10 cryptocurrencies that have different use cases that are going to have staying power if you fast forward about 10 years from now. Is XRP going to be one of those? And if so, what is that going to mean? You're looking at a looking at a market cap today of what is it? You know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 13 billion, whatever it is. Prices fluctuate, but whatever the market cap for XRP is today, even if it's around there, what if it is one of the big ones? What if it absolutely is? Because the fascinating thing that Dan Moorhead also pointed out in a in an interview recently with uh, Thinking Crypto, which is another YouTube channel, a guy named Tony runs that, who's very pro Ripple and XRP. Um, it's not an XRP channel per se. He just covers XRP from time to time. But Dan Moorhead pointed out that uh, this is different. This is bigger than the internet because it's not just like in the case of, of the internet and that like boom and bust cycle, it's not just that you could buy the stock. But in this case, it's like when you're investing in the cryptocurrency, he made the point that you're, you're buying the underlying protocol, you know, which is a much, much bigger deal. Like you're buying something that effectively, you know, can be money. You know, that's, in the case of XRP, it's not that it's trying to replace a fiat currency, but you needed a new form of money actually to solve the train wreck that is the, 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 the world of global cross-border payments. You actually did need a new form of money that nobody controlled. And that's the key piece. It's not just the technology. It's, it's, the, um, it's the trustless nature of it. That's it. And so I think that this all could be worth substantially more than it is today. And that's why I'm happy to be here. And we beat everybody else to it. Everybody else will come in and, they, you know, they can still have great returns, I, I, I suspect, over the coming decades. That's fine. But with each market cycle, the percentage returns diminish. And I've talked about that in other videos. I'm not going to go in depth on that in this video, but they, they do diminish and the market cycles take longer. And there are reasons for that. A lot of it has to do with liquidity. But here we are. And I'm telling you right now, the amount of money in the world of crypto, it's a drop in the bucket. And I think it's going to be worth substantially more. So that's why I'm just thrilled to be here. And if I'm wrong, I lose everything. That's fine. I may be, like, let's not pretend that this isn't risky. 
it's risky. It's it's fine to acknowledge that and and also be very confident, you know. And I am. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And that's why I only put in what I'm willing to lose. But uh, I th I think it's going to be something substantially greater than it is today, both in terms of value, meaning what is actually offered thanks to you know the, you know the network effects of, of specific cryptocurrencies in this case XRP, but also the price action. Price will follow the value. That's. It. It always does, or almost always. If it doesn't, then it certainly should, and people are missing something if it's not. <laughs> but you can tell me what you think below. Am I, am I knocking it out of the park, or am I wrong? I love diversity of thoughts. But that's it for this one. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.